Yo, the Pistons are making moves. It was just announced today that the Pistons have agreed to a two-year, $52 million deal with Tobias Harris. I must say, man, I'm very happy with this move, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't see it coming. King and I have been talking about this for weeks now, and I detailed out reasons as to why I thought it would make sense for the Pistons to add him back to the roster this offseason. So now that Tobias will officially be returning, let's talk about why I'm happy with this move. Reason number one, they can afford to. The Pistons before making this deal have 50 million remaining in cap space. And as I've stated before, you have to use that cap space before the start of the regular season. Tobias' last contract with the Sixers was for five years at $36 million a year, which would have been way too much for the Pistons. But this two year deal that he's gonna be signing will be at 26 million a year, which is 10 less per season. And it's only at two years versus five. In our stream a few weeks ago, I stated that I would love to bring him back in the ballpark of 25 to 30 million a season. His last contract was five years, 180 million. That's 36 million a year. I ain't paying you that, bro. <laughs> Maybe 25, 30? Maybe? And that's just because we have the cap space to do it and we have to spend it. And beggars can't always be choosers. If we can get somewhere in that 25 to 30 range, something like, I don't know, like 30, like three years, 85, 90, you know what I'm saying? I'd do that. And that's exactly what the Pistons did. The signing is very reasonable, especially for a two-year deal, which makes his contract tradable if things go south. But I'm not expecting that. Another plus is that the Pistons still have 24 million in cap space remaining to add either another really good player or they could split it between two or three veterans. Reason number two, we need shooting. Everybody knows that the Pistons' biggest need this offseason was shooting. The Pistons up to this point had not addressed that need. They took Ron Holland in the draft, who I'm actually liking more and more by the day. Well, he's not a good shooter right now. Tobias Harris, though, is a career 37% three-point shooter. And that may not be eye-popping, but he's still pretty reliable and consistent. For context, the league average from three, 35%. In three seasons with us, from 2016 to 2018, Tobias averaged 16.8 points, 5.3 rebounds, and 1.9 assists on 40% shooting in 32 minutes per game. Last season for the Sixers, he averaged 17.3 points, 6.5 rebounds, 3.1 assists, a steal, and nearly a block in 34 minutes per game on 49% shooting, 35% from three, which are honestly better numbers compared to when he was here the first time. Also, the pick and roll game with Kay Cunningham and Jalen Dern relies on spacing, and Tobias can provide that for the Pistons. It'll prevent defenses from packing the paint, which happened way too much last year. When Tobias joined the roster in 2016, he immediately, immediately improved the pick and roll game with Reggie Jackson and Andre Drummond, just by being a shooting threat on the floor. And there's no reason to really believe that he won't provide the same thing for Cade and Jalen. As I mentioned in the previous video, Tobias has family ties here, and his younger brother Terry actually played at Eastern Michigan. I still believe, to this day, that it was a mistake to trade him away in that Blake Griffin trade. Now he's not an all-star, never has been, but he's always been a very solid and steady player who can spread the floor and create offense for himself when needed. He can score in a variety of ways. He plays well within the offense. He doesn't do too much or stagnated either. Now to be fair, last year, he didn't have his best postseason. In the last game of the playoffs, he put up a donut, zero points. I get it, but I'm not gonna judge him off that. He won't be asked to come in and be the guy offensively. He'll be much more of a complimentary scorer who can open things up for the offense. He's also not a great defender, but he's a willing defender and he's much improved since his first go around with the Pistons. Reason number three, Tobias is a consummate pro. He's very serious about his craft and he's a very mature player who's never a distraction. The Pistons are one of the youngest teams in the league and they lack experience. So Tobias can come in and set a good example for a team who's trying to build good habits. He does turn 32 in a couple of weeks, so he's not young per se, but the deal is only two years. So it's still good value for the Pistons. Now, will Tobias Harris start? Yeah, he's gonna start. You don't pay a guy 26 million a year in free agency just to come off your bench. I believe he'll start at the three. He did play the four last season, but at six eight, his lack of size showed in the playoffs last season against the Knicks. I don't like the idea of playing him at the four for extended minutes, especially in a league that's not returning to two big lineups. You look around the league now, teams like Minnesota, Denver, Boston, Milwaukee, the list goes on. They have all implemented this two big lineup. And so we need to be able to match up with their size. Let's talk potential starting fives. So the Pistons can go a few different routes here. I think the only position that is a question mark now is the four. I believe Kate at the one, 
Jaden at the two, Tobias at the three, and Jalen Duran at the five are all locks based on the current roster that we have right now. So for starters, you could go with Asar at the four, who though he wouldn't be a big four, is a great defender already and one of the best rebounders in the league at a size. And as he gets stronger and stronger, he'll be able to play even bigger and bigger than his size. He's not a good shooter, as we all know, but the bias spacing can help mask that until hopefully Fred Benson can help him improve his jumper season over season. Next, you could go with Simone Fontecchio. The Pistons have positioned themselves to keep him around as they offered him a qualifying offer, so all signs point to him coming back. Here's the thing though. He stands at 6'7", 205 pounds. We just talked about how Tobias is an undersized four, and he's 6'8", 236 pounds. So Tobias is bigger than Fontecchio. So if you don't want Tobias at the four, it makes even less sense for Fontecchio, who's smaller, to be there long term. But on the positive side, if you wanted to put Fontecchio at the four, he and Tobias Harris on the floor together would give the Pistons the most spacing they've had in years. Or you could go with Isaiah Stewart. Now, many Pistons fans don't believe Stu is a starter. Many believe he's a backup five long term. And I can understand why. But I beg to differ with this lineup. Because in this lineup, he can provide spacing and defense. He can do all the little things that don't show up in the stat sheet, but can win you games. And he wouldn't have to do too much scoring with Tobias Harris carrying some of that load. And with the spacing that both Stu and Tobias could provide, our guards will have more room to operate to help facilitate easy baskets for Stu. He would also allow the Pistons to match up best against those two big lineups with he and Jalen Duren. And lastly, you could go with Ron Holland, Pistons' newest draft pick. Though I think this is the most unlikely, especially out the gate, Ron Holland down the road could be very interesting. So he's 6'8", 200 pounds, though he plays much bigger than that already. He's extremely athletic. He's an incredible finisher, his motor always runs hot, and he's relentless on defense. Even though I think guys like Asar Thompson are ahead of him defensively at this stage. But he's not a good shooter right now. He only shot 24% last season with the G League Ignite. So it kind of puts you in a similar position as with Asar. But once again, if shooting coach Fred Vincent is able to help both of these young guys improve their three ball to at least a respectable number, things could be very, very promising for the Pistons in the future, perhaps starting both of those guys together down the road. That could be scary. But we'll save that for another day. Which lineup do you think the Pistons should go with? Are you happy with the signing of Tobias Harris? Why or why not? Let me know. And that's a wrap for this video. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. I'm on my way up and I'm not gonna stop. We had it straight to the top in the low. I gotta face it. I got no time to 